It's legal, right? It's totally legal. Okay. How does that work? Do people get upset at you if you do certain things? Haha, -ha, exactly. Perfect. Balances it out. Thing. It's so unknown 
so close and intimate yet contains so many questions about itself. And in fact, I want to discuss this interesting part of our nature. was an environment that gave our ancestors the impetus to grow legs, run fast, swing from trees, swing from trees, and eventually harness fire. To anthropologists, we struck out from Africa hundreds maybe just a hundred thousand years ago to face the unknown but also to eventually birth the earliest cogs of the cooperative invention we call civilization in the fertile earth between the Tigris in Euphrates rivers. To historians, the age of discovery, also known as the age of exploration, is one of the most important periods of geographical exploration in human history lasted from the 1400s, which was probably when it started, you could say, with uh, Spain and France, or Portugal, and lasted, so that's the 15th century, and lasted until the 17th century, after we had already mapped out most of Earth. So, in this period, Europeans explored and discovered, took over vast areas of the Americas, Africa, Asia, and Oceania. Oceania is what they called it, the Atlantic Ocean. And Portugal and Spain dominated these first. that it was round, a sphere.
this helped us prove the true size and existence of an entire mass we call North and South America. And with Galileo's improvements on the telescope in conjunction, it helped define our sense of perspective, sense of perspective in the universe. That in fact we are part of a heliocentric system revolving on a planet, on a biological spaceship, around a fusion, a massive fusion reaction, heating us, giving us warmth in the cold depths of space, in turn revolving around the galaxy is just a series of heliocentric systems. It helped us get that much closer to mapping the, the enduring reality, the enduring reality that we exist in and within and are a part of. So now juxtapose that, juxtapose that with our common conception. You know that we is so often portrayed in movies, War of the Worlds, Alien. Even the Marvel movies. Independence Day. excerpt from an article about benevolent aliens, and I think it connected nicely with that little introduction I wrote that is a view, my view of the, the world as I'm slowly peeling back all the pages of knowledge that was written by my ancestors. This is by Trey Taylor, an 18-year-old, written on September 3rd. Doesn't have a year, so I assume it's 2018. He's a social and political sciences major at Cambridge. Cambridge University. Very intelligent. Did I say it was on the medium.com website? It's called Musings Benevolent, Benevolent Aliens. Culturally, our representations of alien life are largely malevolent. You know, from the movie Signs. that this is how any dynamic of 
contact would actually play out. Our presumption of malicious intent is clearly a projection of our of our own past, our own natures and cultural sensibilities. We already we already know that these aren't necessarily universal, and the impulse to conquer foreign lands was not present in, say, uh, Admiral Zhang of China's Grand Armada. In contrast to uh, Columbus's subjugation of the natives, merely um, Admiral Zhang merely sought to establish diplomatic connections with the lands that, that he explored. So instead of death by alien, instead of violent, domineering, exploitive, conquering impulses, being reflective of all intelligent life, I think it's more intelligent to understand this in the context of our psychological projections based on our own brutal, violent past. And no doubt, that's not to dismiss the possibility entirely, but it is worth reconsidering the motives of an alien race that has reached the sophistication, the sophistication, the technological achievements that would have to be reached to traverse interstellar space. We know collective advancement arises from two things intelligence and cooperation just as it did well in any city state at any point in history it's you might argue that it's enforced tyranny dictation of many by a few but in reality on a daily analysis we all are cooperating to keep the system running. Given that the beings in question would have developed technologies allowing them to contact us and transport themselves through space, we can assume that they're both intelligent and very cooperative. As an aside, this suggests that the ubiquitous motive of resource extraction is possibly, probably, absurd. If they're intelligent enough to travel this far and be able to efficiently harness energy in a very conceivably small enough volume in a starship, spaceship, to deflect particles that would otherwise render them completely, would render the ability to travel so fast across such vast distances to deflect those particles and avoid being You would think that if they were able to achieve this level of technology, they would easily be able to mine asteroids much closer to them in their own systems, even construct Dyson spheres 
to extract the most amount of solar radiation from their local star, their sun. You would think that they would be able to achieve extremely efficient fusion. They would probably be able to mine non-biologically inhabited planets for their minerals. I mean, if we take the Kardashev scale as an example, these would be aliens of at least a type 2 civilization. So it's not safe to assume that they would have figured out that they wouldn't have figured out renewable resources by the, by the time that they that they traveled so far the light years that it would have taken light four years at least or decades if they're even remotely close by to reach us from our own experience we recognize that the interplay from the interplay of intelligence and cooperation it arises a expansion of morality morality being really probably the wisest way the answer to what is the wisest way to play a game to play the to put ourselves in another's shoes is both a rational and emotional exercise requiring the ability to extrapolate from one's own experience to others and a connection to an understanding of the object of your empathy So we know that morality and technology equate and are very proportional in the sense of you can't achieve either without cooperation. And I find it very hard to believe that cooperation can occur without an instinct, an innate sense. just a form of viewing things from multiple perspectives in order to see the reality of it. I guess that's, that's really where science intersects with, with morality, I suppose. That's really cool. I didn't think of it like that before. So we can assume that an alien race with immense knowledge has concern with well-being.
just wanted to express to you guys that the most probable reason for an alien's contact or an arrival with us it wouldn't be hatred or desperation but curiosity and altruism sophisticated enough to be able to relieve the more base impulses that cause violence, such as hunger, thirst, well-being, healthcare, and I can imagine a civilization who has reached the Star Trek Federation level of sophistication would possibly want to they would have understood and internalized by then the true importance of cooperation and social cohesion and perhaps that would impulse Tell them to dart around the universe, or the galaxy at least, assisting various civilizations in their march of progress. So, Trey and I I think it's a compelling argument to be made that we have little to worry about by extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial contact. Despite what Stephen Hawking um, adamantly really proposed, you know, I don't think they would want to enslave us or breed. I. I have a hard time believing that a civilization could advance so far technologically and find so much about the truth of reality to be able to transport across entire interstellar space star systems while still having an ultimately belligerent attitude towards the universe and each other, you know? And being content with that ignorance. Of course, they would by then have robots, very sophisticated machines to do all their labor that hypothetically we might be used for, and of course that would mean also that they have a way of efficiently powering those robots. Um, they wouldn't want to mate with us, they might want to understand our biochemistry, but certainly 
certainly it would, it would be very unlikely that our DNA would be the same. They would have to share polymers or RNA that we use for storing our genetic information. The exact adenosine, guanine, guarine, taurine, I think I butchered those, the A, C, G, T, genetic letters, which are chemical compounds that we use that make up the fundamental structures. One step above atoms that are the materials to build the double helical DNA that define our being. Yeah, even if we were food, which would be, it'd be like diving to the Marianas Trench to get a dinner of crabs. They'd have to have enzymes that allow them to successfully break down and make use of polymers and amino acids. And the bases and sugars and membranes of phospholi phospholipids, fats, that we're made of. Oh, and water. I don't think they would steal our water because even in our own system, we have Europa, which is mostly ice. It holds more liquid water beneath its frozen surface, pure liquid water than we even have here on Earth, so again, assuming their non-malevolence, and I really think there's a great case to be made for that, they wouldn't have any reason to. expense of our lives. And in that same train of thought, I'm just looking at a list of possible reasons. Aliens might invade Earth. They want to colonize. They want to use our raw materials. They want to enslave us. They want to eat us. They they were looking for gold, or diamonds, or even iron, there's so many more asteroids, so many more, so much more of those materials within asteroids and uninhabited planets, that they would have no reason really. researchers, 
They would come as biologists, anthropologists, linguists, keen to understand the peculiar workings of all that life on Earth, to meet humanity, and to learn our art, music, culture, history. Our languages, our philosophy, and philosophy and religion. I think religion would be what we value most in the world. And I think that's is is possibly the most fundamental thing that has allowed us to get where we are today. And what is it? It's there we we have a desire. We might be fearful. But after that fear, initial shock subsides. We want to go out and explore and know so that maybe we can harness the treasure that's out there to be understood and incorporated into our worldview. And maybe, just maybe, everyone out there feels the same way. And maybe they understand the struggle in the fine bottleneck that civilizations in our situation must slip through to come out on the other side of enlightenment and true empathy for everyone else in its ecological sphere. Just
I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of you who have reached out and supported the channel because for all the topics that I often explore, the underlying central theme of the channel is actually curiosity and I think it's something that's severely lacking in, well, in all societies but in ours as well and I you know I'm very glad that I have decided to strike out and stick my neck out and try to convey these topics that really interest me in a relaxing way hopefully um, but more importantly I'm excited that y you have all found enough meaning in it and enough to relate to to want to tell me in a certain way shape or form by giving your support to continue what I'm doing in that it's meaningful enough to you to donate so I I don't want any donations if it's per cutting into your personal even your luxury the, the your your enjoyment if you have another purpose for it so to those of you who have chosen to donate I just want to say how immensely grateful I am and how much it inspires me to keep going and to get better and be more thorough and find the most interesting perspectives on the world based on the knowledge and speculation that we know um, and that we're used to doing. So, just I want to say thank you. Uh, seriously, I, I I don't want to sound stereotypical and say it wouldn't the old it wouldn't be you know if it wasn't for you I wouldn't be here. It, that's all true, but I wanted to express this in a personal way, I guess, so, and make it more individualized, I guess, more and more unique to my situation, because I certainly wouldn't be taking the time to make these videos if I didn't know that people were interested in watching them, and beyond watching them, subscribing and commenting and then of course donating like you all have chosen to do so um it it means so much it, it it's actually the thing that keeps me going i mean i would probably explore and read these but i wouldn't have the time or impulse to make videos on these topics if uh you guys hadn't reached out to tell me that you're enjoying them as much as you are, so, um, I just want to thank, uh, Andy, Matthias Feibig, Mark Cohn, Debbie Cottrell, Kieran Cox, Sean, um, Antoine Issa, Eric Castro, Xander, not Xander with a Z, uh, Richard, Justine Bell, Penny wants to thank you too. Where is she? Oh, there she is. In case you're wondering who, who that is snoring. Um, Alex 
Alexander Arruyo, your great moderator, by the way, Shane Berry, Cheyenne Naji, Nick Toombs, um, and of course Steve Hardiaka in Potato Lounge, um, Alan Teeter, Dale Chester, Dylan Cameron, thank you so much, Cameron, Katie McHale, Simon Smith, Ella Gregory, Luke Baird, Julian Bronco, thank you, man, um, Wesley Hahn, Cheryl M. ASMR, Yusuf Majub, Stefan Monich, Anders Anderson, um, Alexander Tremblay from
So I want to support this app and thank you in particular to those of you who have chosen to support me on this this medium. Andy, Felipe, Fred Faust, and Xander with an X. So I just want to say thank you guys sincerely very, very much because it means it means a lot to me because it keeps me inspired to have that connection with you guys in particular and uh, that's it's part of our nature we're curious but we're curious because we need uh, to be grounded in the relations between each other Venturing out, exploring, and discovering new things is meaningless if you don't have something to return and share that information with. Some people, some home, some community, and some relationships. And you guys are the people who I most am inspired to come and, and share what I've found.